We live in a world of 7 billion people. We human beings share many things. We share the desire to be successful, to make a difference, to live a long and healthy life, and to raise healthy families. Along with these goals, we are also increasingly sharing microorganism viruses and bacteria to which we may or may not have developed resistance. Organisms smaller than the eye can see are capable of threatening the health of the world's population. For example, on May 5, 2014, the World Health Organization declared the international spread of polio, the most feared and disabling disease of the 20th century in the United States, to be a new public health emergency for all countries. The reason for this rare action lies in the fact that the crippling polio virus is again being found in countries previously freed from polio by massive public vaccination campaigns. In addition, the number of polio cases in countries like Pakistan, Nigeria, Afghanistan are on the rise. Pakistan had 112 new documented cases of polio in the past 12 months. Syria, previously polio-free, had at least 100 documented cases in 2013. The polio virus has recently been found in the water and sewage of Egypt and Israel. In short, active transmission of polio between countries like Somalia, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Equatorial Guinea, Syria, and Egypt is rising. Due to wars and political and social turmoil abroad, the ability of these countries' public health system to provide vaccinations to these populations has dropped off. Couple this with protective breakdown with international travel, facilitating the spread of the virus between countries, and the world is once again seeing a dramatic increase in polio, a very contagious and dangerous disease that was once almost eradicated. In the U.S. itself, more and more young parents are choosing not to vaccinate their children, resulting in the alarming reappearance of other serious childhood diseases like measles, whooping cough, chickenpox, and mumps. Unless we can strengthen the vaccination rates in the U.S. and throughout the world, it may be only a matter of time before polio reappears in the United States, with devastating consequences. With such a dramatic increase in polio cases and the ability for the virus to cross international borders via unsuspecting travelers, is it possible for polio to enter the United States again? Virus vaccinations are very important. And polio is one of those vaccinations that should be given to all children, a series of four here in the United States, along with all the other viruses that can cause serious illnesses such as measles and mumps and chickenpox and meningitis. We can prevent these illnesses as long as we all are up to date on our vaccination programs. Uh, the current decline in vaccinations in our society I feel is a scary thing for our entire population because in, our, in the past, we've done such a great job at vaccinating our population, which is why all of these diseases like polio have become so obscure and we don't uh, hardly ever see them anymore. So the fact that we are not vaccinating makes us incredibly vulnerable to the prospect of those diseases actually coming back into our country and becoming a huge problem again. But I've also seen cases of pertussis and actually had a friend's, um, one of my friends knew somebody that um, she had two little kids at home and one, she had a three-year-old at home and a newborn baby and she had not vaccinated her children against pertussis. They did not receive the Tdap vaccination. Her little three-year-old ended up getting pertussis and it ended up killing her newborn. The three-year-old was able to recover from it, but since newborns are so vulnerable to these types of diseases, the newborn did die. The information age has made us all believe that we can become experts in quite a few things. And so we get on the internet, we read books, we do um, all kinds of um, media things that we have information right at our fingertips. And it's not always reputable information. So, um, you know, reading those books that non-experts write and um, 
feeling like you're doing the best thing for your child, which is what everybody wants to do. That's the ultimate goal. Um, you feel like that maybe you can come up with a better plan than what supposedly the pharma, the pharma, big pharma companies, the doctors, the uh, government has come up with. And so it's a very educated group, and yet they really don't have the scientific information that supports what they want to believe. And they follow those beliefs even though they can't be replicated in the literature. There are many people in this country who don't remember the effects of polio or many of the other illnesses that we currently vaccinate against. Vaccination drastically reduces the incidence of these dangerous diseases, with rare incidences of side effects. Let's look at the realities of the polio vaccine. When the injectable vaccine was finally developed, no one had to convince parents to have their children vaccinated. Everyone wanted to be first in line. The injectable polio vaccine, or IVP, that we use here in the United States has occasional minor local reactions such as pain, redness, or tenderness at the injection site. No serious reactions have ever been documented with the injectable vaccine. There are some who would say that the use of this vaccine causes autism in children. However, these accusations are without scientific foundation. In countries where logistics don't allow for the injectable vaccine, the oral polio vaccine is given. It is considered very safe and easy to administer with the benefits far outweighing any risks. Over the years, vaccines have prevented countless cases of disease and their often crippling after effects, such as paralysis, deafness, infertility, and damage to the heart, brain, or kidneys. Vaccines have saved millions of lives and preserved quality of life as well for whole populations. While adults and children with compromised immune systems due to chemotherapy, chronic illness, or certain other conditions should not receive vaccines, they are protected by everyone else in the community who has been vaccinated. Maintaining this protective wall of immunity is one way the rest of us who enjoy good health can pay it forward for those who are the most vulnerable. Without vaccinations, we as a people leave ourselves open to all manner of disease much of which could be prevented or even eradicated. In recent years, we have seen major outbreaks of serious diseases that have not been a problem in years due to dropping vaccination rates. If I were to give advice to young parents about vaccinations, I would strongly encourage every single parent to vaccinate their children for every single disease out there. I know a lot of, a lot of us that were born in Generation X have not seen a lot of these diseases like polio and measles and all of these things, but they're real and they're still out there and we are no longer just talking about the public health of our country, but the public health of the entire world. And since these diseases are still around the world, we are still vulnerable to getting these diseases. And the reason why we vaccinate against them is because they are such terrible diseases that can cause children to be sick for many, many years, be disabled for the rest of their lives, or even die. And so the minor side effects that you can, that your children can get from having a vaccination, like sight soreness, redness, maybe a little low-grade fever for a couple of days, is nothing compared to them being paralyzed for the rest of their lives from having polio. We all want to remain healthy and strong, and we want the same for our children and future generations. Vaccinate your children. I'm Scott Wheeler. Stay healthy.